This podcast is made possible in part by Todd Ulbrich and Craig Brierly. Thank you so, so much, guys. So we got two new patrons this time around, both joined at the $3 a month plus alpha tier, which means they get access to Japanese plus alpha, a solo podcast that I do about the Japanese language. And uh, by the way, the latest episode, episode 13, just came out a little while ago. That one came out around the end of May. So if you're curious about that, uh, and by the way, that one is related to, <laughs> I guess you would say, uh, Japanese teenage girl slang, actually two specific words that came up in a radio show that I was listening to. So if you're curious about that, then you got to join the $3 a month plus alpha tier over at japanko.com slash patreon so once again thank you so much todd and craig really i mean it from the bottom of my heart you guys are amazing and you help make this show possible thank you yeah there was one kid who you know came to school with no no eyebrows and he was locked in a small room the whole day you know, being yelled they, at. They, they at said, teachers, "Grow your yeah. eyebrows, <laughs> grow them faster." You can't <laughs> faster, faster. <laughs> yeah. Eat some seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ichimon Japan. I'm Tony, and and I'm Ryan. And once again, today we are joined by someone that I always enjoy talking to. He's a very interesting person with an interesting life. And you can go listen to Japan Station episode 45 to listen more about him or back to our pronouns episode. But uh, stand up comedian. And uh, I think we can call him a friend of the show and friend of ours, Shu Murakami. Konnichi, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Shu Murakami, it's a huge honor to be back on the show. Thanks a lot, Ryan and Tony, for having me. No, it's always great to have you on. Yeah, uh, have you, you have back. some great stories and uh, some great insight into, uh, especially what we're going to be talking about today, because today is a very interesting topic. So uh, let, let's introduce the topic. Uh, Ichimon means one question, and every episode on the show, we uh, talk about you know one question about Japan. We try to answer a question about Japan, and today's question is, what is a Yankee or Furio? Yay, let's do that. <laughs> so, uh, Furio, I, I guess the, the most general term is Furio, and... Um, and then there's a bunch of other terms that are used that basically mean the same thing. But um, let's just explain what a furio is uh, very briefly, and then we'll get into uh, the, all the details and, and all the different types and all that. But uh, a furio literally means no good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> what is a no right. good? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no right. Good. Like it's that's such right. a Fudio, like the yeah. first time that. The first time that at least I probably heard that, I was probably confused because it's like no good. Like, what, what's a no good? Like, there's no noun there, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's what we do in Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no nouns, no pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but it, like I said, it means the kanji for no or like the negation, fu, and then ryo means good. But uh, it's referring to basically like juvenile delinquents or kind of like rebel kids or mm. uh, kind of like punk uh, kids, I guess you could say. Punk uh, could probably be the closest for American English. What? I, th I think punk would be the closest, especially when we get to the appearance and stuff. Punk right, kids. right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically, bad child. Yeah, yeah. Some some kind of bad child. Yeah, like uh, usually it's referring to like a junior high student or a high school student. And uh, oh, I want to see like is... a kindergartner with a giant pompadour. Furio <laughs> 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 Yochienji. <laughs> well, Crayon Shinchan might be someone oh, yeah. like that. He, he's like pretty much like Furio, yeah. Furio, but what he does is pretty much like what Furio does. Or more than yeah, that, yeah, he's, right? <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah, he is kind of furio-ish, I guess you could say, yeah. Yeah. He just hasn't um, had time to grow the hair out, but he'll get there. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't, yeah. <laughs> but um, now when you say furio, like you can be referring to like all kinds of 
people in this category. Um, we are mainly going to be talking about kind of the classic Furio, which dates back to like the 70s and 80s. Uh, but even today, kids still do get called Furio. That is still a term that is used today. And we will discuss that briefly as well. Um, but uh, before we get into that, I just want to discuss this term a little bit more because, um, as I said, the first time that if you're a Japanese learner, the first time you hear furio, it might be a little bit confusing because, again, there's no noun. But after doing a little bit of research, I think furio seems... is a noun. <laughs> well, yeah, furio right, has yeah. become a noun. Yes, yeah, yeah, furio, furio now is a noun. Is a noun. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh>. yeah. <laughs> yes, that is so true. Yeah, it became a noun, even though it kind of isn't. But yeah, now it's a noun. Um, but uh, it seems to have originated from a longer term, which is uh, furyo koi shonen. So koi means like action. And then shonen means like young man or boy, usually like a teenager-ish age. No good um, action boy. Yeah, so no good action boy. Yeah, <laughs> It's like a poorly translated super villain sidekick. <laughs> It's like, I am Superman and this is no good action boy. <laughs> uh, so I think this term originated with the police. Um, and then maybe from there it got turned into like Furio Shonen, which is like no good boy. And then maybe from there it got turned into Furio. But, um, you know, I'm not I'm not 100% clear on that evolution, but it seems that Furio was not how it began. It probably began as one of these longer terms. Uh, but uh, as, as I said, there are other terms for um, this kind of person. Um, perhaps one of the most popular ones that you still hear today is Yankee. That's right. Yeah, Yankee. Uh, and uh, <laughs> like this is another confusing term for a Japanese learner because... Like, of course, Yankee sounds just like uh, Yankee, right? In, in English, like the American term that came up in the Civil War that you would use to refer to Northerners in the Civil War, right? The Yankees. Well, or I uh, think that Japanese Yankee came from that like, English word, Yankee. Yes, yes. So, no? Well, I don't know how, yes. like, but, you know, like, there's a, a funny story. Uh, so there's this uh -huh. uh, baseball team, Yankees, right? New York Yankees. Yeah, New York, yeah. So first I thought that, you know, Yankees would be a team with a little Furio <laughs> people, you know, <laughs> with the bats, with the nails and stuff, you know. What, what, <laughs> that's what we do here. That's what, you know, Yankees do here in Japan. So that's when, why they always win. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, like, that's exactly what I thought when I, you know, first heard about this baseball team, New York Yankees, then I, you know, watched them play and there was no, you know, crazy hair, you know, yeah. like player. No first of all, they, they always wear hats. So, you know, yeah. but that was my first impression of New York Yankees. <laughs> That's so true. That's so funny. Like, yeah, when you think of it kind of backwards, right? Like for us as English speakers, we think Yankee and then you know, we think kind of the original meaning, but then yeah, the New first Yorker. thing that you think of is the baseball team because <laughs> that's what you associate it with. Uh, uh, but it's so, yes, it does seem like it comes from the English Yankee. Now, the story that I see uh, when I look this up, and this is multiple sources, they all basically say more or less the same thing. But in Osaka, there's this place that um, is called Amemura. Mm -hmm. and um that's short for america mura mm -hmm. um and and this is in um the like namba shinsaibashi ish area of the the minami area the south area of osaka um ryan i'm, I'm sure you've probably passed through there i actually times. never went there when i lived there but recently when mm -hmm. i went to visit a friend we did go there oh, okay yeah, yeah i've passed they had a new marvel a store times. he wanted to see <laughs> yeah yeah there so i think the impression that I get is that like back in the maybe 60s and 70s, Amemura was a bit more wild. Um, yeah, but now it's just like nowadays, a shopping area. Yeah, I'm nowadays sorry. it's just another shopping area. Yeah. Um, there are still a lot of like shops that sell kind of Western style stuff in clothing and fashion. And um, there's some restaurants that are kind of like more Western-ish. Like I passed through there a few years ago and they, there was, um, I think there was an Eggs and Things, which is a... Uh, a restaurant that started in Hawaii. So <laughs> it's like a pancake breakfast shop. Um, so anyway, I don't think it's the kind of like tough place that maybe it was. 
but um eggs are pretty story... tough man <laughs> yeah yeah eggs and, and things, things. Oh. we don't know what those things could be <laughs> yeah they, they could be, be bombs bats with nails and <laughs> 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 but okay so the story seems to be that back in maybe the 70s um, you know, they, they did have these stores that would sell these kind of like Western style clothing. Um, and so the kids that would go there would dress up in these flashy style clothes. Um, like some descriptions say that they would wear like uh, Hawaiian shirts, like Aloha shirts. Um, and uh, anyway, just like American style clothing. And so these kids started being called Yankee because they were wearing like American stuff. Uh, and Yankee was, you know, Yankee American. So from there, this seems to have expanded and then become a general term for Furio, like these kind of delinquent punk kids. <sighs> so um, something interesting that, that I found is um, in, in the Japanese Wikipedia, I found a source that was cited that explained that the first mention seems to go back to like 1975. That seems to have been in some rock song from Kansai. So Yankee seems to have been mainly used in Kansai. And then in 1983, Kamon Tatsuo, who is this very well-known like kind of comedian singer. Um, he does a lot of really funny, funny songs. Um, he's kind of like the Weird Al Yankovic of Japan. Um, so he did this song called Yankee no Nichan. And this seems to have been his first big song. And this spread to the rest of the country. And so he is credited with having like popularized this term outside of Kansai. Hey. Um, now I'm sure there were already other people using it, but this song helped get it more exposure and get it to the next level. So the impression that I get is that in Kanto in the seventies, Yankee wasn't really being used, but once we get into the eighties, especially the second half of the eighties, Yankee becomes pretty popular all across the country as a term. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but basically, they, like I said, Yankee and Furio are more or less referring to the same thing. They mean more or less the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, there is another term, one more term that, that I want to introduce, and that's called tsuppari. Ah, um, we don't do that anymore, actually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So this is really interesting because tsuppari seems to refer to mainly like the furio of like the maybe 60s, 70s, especially. Mm. Um, and maybe a little bit in the 80s. But then once you get into like the latter half of the 80s, it, it seems like you don't see tsuppari so much. And then nowadays you don't really see tsuppari unless it's like on purpose, like some sort of retro band or something like that. Um, but tsuppari... So in the 70s, it seems like the main type of furio was this tsuppari and they were kind of like rock and roll motorcycle kind of like punk kids. And they were like in these bosozoku, these motorcycle gangs, and they dressed with like sunglasses and uh, like kind of like biker gang clothes. And they rode around on motorcycles and all this kind of stuff. And, and this was like what they would call them the tsuppari. This seems to have been most popular in the Kanto area. So around Tokyo. Well, you know, like, when, when I hear, uh, sorry to interrupt, but when I hear, yeah, yeah. like, tsuppari, it sounds like, uh, like, a tougher version or, like, worse version of furio. Like, tsuppari people will be really, really bad people, like, bad kids. Yeah. Like, They're tougher the OG or, like, yankee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, my yeah, impression I, I when impression I hear too, this yeah. word. And we, we don't, mm -hmm. yeah, we, I don't think we have, like, many tsuppari kids anymore, like, now. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's not popular <laughs> anymore. So, yeah, probably yeah, yeah. we'll be talking about this later. But, you know, when I, mm -hmm. like, when I say or when you hear, like, this word furio, it refers mm -hmm. to someone who dyes their hair or, you know, look mm -hmm. a little, like, different but mm -hmm. when I when I hear tsuppari, my impression will be like that person is really bad, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Har harming yeah, yeah. people or on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's my impression of that word tsuppari. Yeah, yeah. So they are really associated with, like I said, like the bosozoku, which are like these motorcycle gangs that were really, really big in, especially in the seventies, but a little bit, you know, but in the eighties too, to some extent. Um, so yeah, they are all about like fighting and and you know beating the crap out of each other and mm -hmm. <laughs> making a whole bunch of noise. And yeah, they were basically gangs, but um, you know, th this style to some extent, it seems did influence later in the eighties when you get the more like classic Yankee, which is the kind that you see in anime a lot. 
um, and some, you know, 80s Japanese media. And this is basically like the kind of student that has like the pompadour, the, the you know, like the, that puffy hair in the, in the front. And like uh, uh, they'll have all kinds of like crazy school uniforms. And you see this in shows like... Um, Uh, for example, Yu Yu Hakusho, you see a lot of these guys. Mm. Um, uh, Kuwabara, I think, like he he has a pompadour. Um, Hajime no Ippo, like one of the main boxers, he has a pompadour, and he was like a Furio kid that the coach finds, and then he says, "I'm going to turn you into a boxer." Um, that's uh, Mamoru Takamura is his name. Um, so anything that takes place in the 80s in Japan, a lot of times you see these characters, like these kids with like big pompadours, and they're fighting all the time. Mm-hmm. that's right yeah um, yeah so i think when people say yankee um you know nowadays like you said like they think like maybe blonde hair and that kind of thing but the kind of classic yankee goes back to the 80s and and that is the one that you often see in in um japanese media um so i do want to talk a little bit more about the like fashion of of the time but um ryan what what's your impression of the 80s classic yankee fashion <laughs> I mean, I guess bright clothes and giant pompadour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bigger the, the, the oh, so in Japanese they call it the rizento. Rizento, yeah. Um, yeah, rizento, which I guess comes from the English regent, but in in English we would just call it a pompadour, which is a combination of like this puffy thing in the front, and they call it a duck tail or a a duck's duck's ass is what they call it in the back, where they comb it a certain way, where oh, they, like they weird. I don't know how to describe it, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it, like the the side and back of the head look like the side and back of a duck almost. <laughs> like the feathers are combed in that sort of As we all way. know, ducks are the most rebellious animals in nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you think like, for example, like John Travolta in Greece or the Fonz in uh, Happy Days or um, John, uh, what is it, James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause, mm-hmm. I think like they all have this kind of like slick back hair. Um, and then you add the big puffy thing at the front. That's what you get. You get the rizento. And uh, so this is just classic 80s Japan, like so Fudio 80s style. Japan was like mimicking 50s America. Yeah, it, it kind of, <laughs> they were inspired by 50s America. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another interesting thing is the school uniform. So they would modify their school uniform. So the basic uniform is called kind of like the gakuran. Right, and it's kind of like a like a suit, right? Shoe, like that's right. Yeah, with the five buttons. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it has like the tall collar, right? That's right. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So, like, usually, usually they're a dark color, maybe like a dark, like a navy blue or a black or something like that. Um, it's usually but, uh, black. Yeah, black. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but of course. These, these guys they were you know rebels against society right so they would change they would modify them in all kinds of ways like there were versions that had really really short coats like maybe like at the around the rib cage like the bottom of the rib cage mm. almost like a like a bolero <laughs> like a vest kind of thing uh and then they would have like these kind of bright belts um oh yeah and then they would have um, also the pants. They would modify the pants so they would have what was called um, either dokan, which were like these really wide pants, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like the legs were really wide. I think like you sometimes you still see them with like construction workers, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was also the, what was it called? The bontan? Bontan. Yeah, I have heard about it, but I don't exactly know what it is. Bontan. Yeah, so yeah, the bontan that... were the pants that they would be kind of wide up until the knee, and then they would become really narrow. I guess you would like tuck them in somehow. Ah, okay, like, like the yeah, bottom. the thing the construction workers wear as well, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, to me, they remind me almost of like what you would see like Shakespeare wear or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are coming from those Europe or American culture. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> they thought Shakespeare was very Furio or Yankee. <laughs> very I don't know. Fif- <laughs> the most OG America of all, and- <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fifties America and Yankee uh, and uh, Shakespeare fashion combined. That's like really tough guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, and then, like, the shoes were also really interesting that they would, like, sometimes they would wear, like, sandals 
or like even the sandals that you might wear to like go to the toilet, like these slip on sandals. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, they, I think they would call them like tsukake, right? Oh, um, yeah. Now they're called like toilet sandal. Sandals toilet for sandal. toilets. <laughs> yeah. But once upon a time, those like sandals were like assumed to be like cool by those f u r i o people, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really why, understand why. why, but that's such a peculiar <laughs> thing, right? Like, why that? But that was the fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so,、uh, so you would see this, of course, you know, these guys, they were always like going around and fighting each other and all that. But、um, you would also get the female version, which was called、uh, Skeban. <laughs> and、uh, Skeban comes from、um, the kanji for woman. Um, in this case, red ske. And then ban comes from bancho, which bancho was the leader of a group of these furyo. And so you combine that, and the, this is the popular theory that that's how you get ske ban.、Um, so, Ryan, could you describe what a stereotypical ske ban of the 70s, maybe a little bit 60s and 80s, like what this kind of look was? Well, they had the normal uniform more or less, but the skirt would be very, very long. Yeah.、Uh, apparently, they need to carry some kind of stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some kind of weapon a lot of times, like a bat or a wooden sword or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know this until recently, but apparently, a mask is also part of it. Yeah, yeah. So when I was looking this up, like, you know, we can't introduce every single aspect of this fashion. We would be here like two, three hours, but, you know, we're just trying to focus on the most kind of like popular perception, popular ideas of what these were.、Um, and a lot of times I saw that they had these masks, like face masks on. Sometimes they would like、mm. be things that you would wear like around the neck, almost like a bandana. Sometimes they'd be kind of like the, the modern face mask, like surgical kind of mask. And my assumption is that that's kind of to like hide your identity because these girls were walking around and like picking on the weak girls and beating them up. So they wanted to look no, tougher. No, they were just and, and maybe... really strongly enforcing social distancing. They were, they were prepared for <laughs> Corona. <laughs> they were 40 Ooh, years ahead of the curve. The、yeah. stick was two meters long. So they could be like, no, 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 you must be this far apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were so like, angry all the time. Like, stay away, stay away. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> They're actually the unsung heroes of Japanese culture.、Right. Yeah, they were like,、uh, like Bill Gates. They were saying, a pandemic is coming. Please listen to me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's the popular depiction, like a sailor uniform, but with a really, really long skirt, like all the way down to like, the ankles or the, the feet, basically. Um, sometimes they would wear boots, or sometimes they would wear those sandals or beach sandals.、Um, uh, so, different variations, but again, this is the very common kind of stereotypical、uh, depiction. So, I think,、uh, I think we can take a quick break here and we'll come back. We'll discuss a little bit more of that kind of 80s style stuff, and then we'll talk a little bit more about、uh, Furio today as well. Hey, so just a few quick things and then we'll get back into the rest of the episode. So, first of all, if you're a patron and you downloaded this episode from the Patreon feed, then you're going to get access to a bonus segment after the outro music. And in that bonus segment、uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about Furio, Yankee,、uh, slang and terminology that was used in, in that world of Furio and Yankee.、Uh, I think we talk about five different words, and these are not words that you're bound to hear in your day. Daily life in, in Japan. And I think a lot of these words pretty much aren't used anymore, but they are very interesting. And、uh, we had a fun time talking about them. So if you're curious about that and you're not a patron, then you can go over there to japankyo.com slash Patreon, sign up. And、uh, for as little as $1 a month, you'll get access to that bonus segment after the outro music. All right.、Uh, also, if you're going to be doing any shopping on Amazon and you want to support the show, then make sure to use japankyo.com slash Amazon. That's going to support the show, sends a few pennies my way. And I literally mean, usually it's like a few. Pennies here and there, but hey, it all adds up.、Uh, so, again, japanki.com slash Amazon won't cost you anything extra. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review, and spread the word about the show. Tell your friends about the show, share it on social media, maybe do a post on Reddit or somewhere. That stuff helps immensely. Word of mouth is pretty much the most powerful form of advertising. So, if you really do enjoy the show, then hey, why not tell somebody about it? All right. And last thing, if you haven't checked out Japan Station, that's another podcast that I do. In that one, I interview people about Japan related topics, and the latest episode is episode 67. In that one, I interview Dr. Rebecca Copeland about her new book. 
the Kimono Tattoo. It's a pretty fun murder mystery set in Kyoto, and it stars a mystery-solving translator that gets caught up in this crazy cursed kimono murder thing. And like I said, it's a pretty fun book. So if you're curious about that, uh, go check out episode 67 of Japan Station, or you can just go pick up the book at japankyo.com slash Amazon. All right, so let's get back into the rest of the episode. All right, so we're back. Um, one quick thing that I do want to very briefly mention um, is that, uh, of course, like like I said, a lot of these Furio things you see uh, in Japanese media, especially of the 80s, um, like I said, anime and live action dramas, um, there was a skib on boom in the 80s. And there was a bunch of TV shows and manga and anime that had something to do with skib on. Um, one particularly crazy one is skib on Deka. I will include a link in the show notes um, about this series. But there was like a live action one. There was an anime and the main character would fight other Skiban using a yo-yo. Um, and then another one used like a gold coin. And I think, what, what was another th- crazy weapon that they used, uh, Ryan? Uh, there's Wolverine claws on a glove. <laughs> <laughs> there's paper cranes. Yeah, I think one had Hashi or just some kind of small sticks. I can't really tell from the photo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you attack there's, other people, right? Using paper crane. Yeah, <laughs> I, have no yeah. Idea. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But apparently there was a real big craze for Skibon and just Fudio in general at the time. So I'll include a video that explains more about Skibon Dick. It's pretty funny. Um but uh anyway, let, let's keep going with some of these other kind of trends that are associated with um with Fudio. Uh so we can get into let's talk about eyebrows. So <laughs> um I think this this trend of shaving the eyebrows is one that you still see today. Shoot, like, would you say that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. So this is okay. So you, so this, I guess, started back in the day, maybe in the seventies, maybe in the eighties. I don't know exactly when, but you do still see it with some kids today that want to look tough. They they just completely shave off the eyebrows. That's right. Well, we don't see like many of them anymore. But mm-hmm. yeah, when they do it, yeah, they would definitely look like Yankee, or they want to be looking like Yankee for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like one, I was trying to, you know, read a little bit about this to see if I could find anything interesting. And one person in Japanese was writing about, um, at their school, they, their, I guess their teacher or their principal or whatever told them like when told the boys at the, like, uh, school meeting because, uh, most schools, I think they have like a weekly, uh, meeting like maybe in the gym or in the outside field where everybody gathers and then, you know, the teachers will give speeches and tell them what to do and blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, so that's it's right. probably one of these... now we don't do it under this COVID-19 situation, but oh, yeah. that's true. We, we... Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, for your information, I'm a teacher at a junior high school, uh, right now. Right, right, right. So I know a lot about school stuff. Yeah. 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 When I was working there a few years ago, it was like, I think it was every Monday morning, they would That's take right, all the Monday kids morning. out to the, yeah, outside uh, in the field. And then the Kocho sensei, the principal would give a, like a 15 minute speech and make every, you know, they would stand super there and they would have to listen ones to usually. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes. They are, they are super trying to give, you know, those super boring speeches. <laughs> yeah. Which are like these life lessons. But I mean, how many super uh, important life lessons can you give if you have to do one every week, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so probably at one of these meetings, the kids were told, like, the boys were told, when you go get a haircut at the barber, tell the barber, don't touch your eyebrows. Like, don't touch them even a little bit. Don't sh- cut them. Don't shave them. You cannot touch your eyebrows at all. So <laughs> a lot of schools prohibit students from doing anything to their eyebrows, probably mm. still to this day. That's right. Um, yeah. Because so, barbers will uh, just shave them off if you don't warn them not to. <laughs> In Japan, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or maybe the second you sit, <laughs> if, if they want when... to get your eyebrows, the second you sit down, they're going straight for them unless you explicitly say, "Please don't do that." I didn't know that. Culture. They're sharpening the razor as as they're waiting. <laughs> maybe only in Ishikawa, where you are, Ryan. <laughs> I've never been there, so I don't know their culture. Yeah, you no have offense. To say, chutobate, chutobate. Oh, no, I don't. Please don't don't cut them off. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in Ishikawa, be careful. They, they'll shave yeah. them right off. Really? Um, 
So, but I was trying to find out if maybe there was some interesting reason why this started. Um, and I don't, I don't know if there really is, but one theory that one person proposed in a Japanese um, Yahoo Chiyabukuro, which is basically like the Jap- Japanese Yahoo Answers, um, they said that originally the Furio would shave their eyebrows so it looked like they were kind of angry. It looked like a, like an upside down V. You know, like, you know, how when you get angry in like anime, you're going to see the, like a frown, you know, like the eyebrows kind of point downwards at a diagonal slope. So they would try to sharpen them and kind of shave them so they looked kind of more menacing, more, more angry, more scary. But eventually, I guess they just got tired of having to do that kind of like sculpting of the eyebrows and they just started <laughs> shaving them completely off. So that's the theory. But, um, I, I don't know if that's totally true, but it certainly seems like it could be. Um, yeah, it's much easier now, when when you completely shave them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, no mistakes, right? You just cut it all off. <laughs> uh, but I mean, nowadays girls, you know, pluck and shave, and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I I hope that it's not as strict as it was, but I'm sure that some schools still, right? They still prohibit that kind of thing. Yeah, there was one kid who you know came to school with no no eyebrows. And he was locked in a small room the whole day, you know, being yelled they, at. They, they at said, teachers, "Grow your you know. eyebrows, <laughs> grow them faster." He can't, <laughs> faster, faster. <laughs> Eat some seaweed. <laughs> You're gonna stay in here until they grow back, <laughs> right? Yeah, that that's what happened. Yeah, in a school. So yeah, it's really prohibited, you know, like shaving or, you know, like yeah. touching eyebrows. Right. 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 Yeah, I mean, generally, like some like the, what we were talking about with like the big pants and the 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 long or the short coat version of the school uniform and the rizento, the pompadour, those things are not popular anymore. People normally don't wear those things anymore. But they should. But unless they, should. they, they definitely uh, should. Unless they were really <laughs> impressed by those like old old like yes. 80s dramas or exactly, exactly unless they really want to look tough or different. Yes, yes, yes. Um, for example, I found one Japanese YouTuber who makes content basically all about his life as a person with a rizento, with a pompadour. <laughs> um, and he, he, the, the YouTube channel is called, I think, uh, Rizento Times, if I remember correctly. I'll include a link in the show notes. And he explains that he uh, has had a rizento for like eight or nine years. And he has a bunch of videos talking about life as a person with a reason, though it's it's very <laughs> unique. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, so some people still do have some aspects of this, but some aspects are a little bit more common. Like, for example, the shy eyebrows, the shaved eyebrows. Not super common, but still not uh, super rare like some of the other things that we talked about. Um, so one last uh, kind of major area that uh, I want to highlight, and then we can talk a little bit more about uh, maybe like modern times. Um, is uh, the practice of dyeing your hair, especially dyeing it blonde. Um, that is something that has become associated with Furio in general. I, I guess it may have started in the 80s, but it's very much continued on through the 90s and, and even to today. Um, like This is still one of like the big deals that, that you can do as a student in Japanese school. Like If, if you super dye your big. hair a lot of times, right? it's like a super, super big deal, right? It's a huge deal, yeah. Um, so like a lot of times they'll, they'll like, like you were saying with the, um, what, what, what is it that they, oh, with the eyebrows, right? Like they'll, mm-hmm. if a kid shows up with his hair blonde, they'll put him in a separate room and then like yell at him for hours, right? No, just blonde. If you dyed your hair a bit to like brown mm-hmm. or like or even brown, yeah. brown, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. the, the thing is the action of dyeing hair is strictly prohibited in mm-hmm. yeah, public mm-hmm. schools in Japan. Yeah. So one of the, this is, to me, um, here's an here's a, an example from from Dragon Ball. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a scene that I thought was just so funny when I when I understood it when I finally understood the Japanese because in English you don't get this joke at all, but um, Gohan is a is a Saiyan and so or half Saiyan. 
is the son of Goku. And so he becomes a Super Saiyan. That's when the hair stands up and you get the blonde hair. And so I think it's the first time that Chi Chi sees Gohan with the blonde hair. She says, Oh my God, you look like a Furio. <laughs> I think she's right. I think so, she says to Goku, like you turned him into a Furio or something. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't translate that to English, right? Like it doesn't make sense in English. It's like, you know, it's not funny. But in Japanese, to me, that was just so funny because I, I was not expecting that, right? It's like she compares him to these like no good like punk kids, but we all know that he just became like a more powerful version of himself. So um, yeah, dyeing your hair is very much associated with Furio, even though so many people in Japan dye their hair either blonde or, or brown. And it's once you're out, outside of school, it's not really such a big deal, right? Yeah, I think out, after high school, I don't have numbers, but just from... What I see in the world around me, I think the hair dyeing rate is higher than in America. I get that impression too. Yeah. Well, yeah, like mm -hmm. they are not necessarily furio, like very bad kids, exactly. but you know, like dyeing hair. Well, mm -hmm. when when you dye your hair, you are diff are you are definitely assumed as like a furio and super bad you know like you don't have any like personality like you you don't have any rights to say anything if only if you dyed your hair you're you're no no conditions you know you are a bad kid if you ever dyed yep. your hair yeah 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 instantly they just say you know this is the way you are even though like it's like whatever you just dyed your hair that doesn't say anything about who you are as a person so yeah 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 and per personally you might be a very nice person but you know like yeah. if you dyed your hair to you know any color and you are like n with no condition bad kid or when your ankle bones are showing <laughs> you are <laughs> <laughs> oh you, yeah, you yeah. we didn't talk about it on the show so sorry yeah, yeah, you gotta uh, cut it yeah should, at the school where again? you work at <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, at the school where you work at, there's a rule that you have to have socks that cover the ankle bone, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one student showed up with socks that were too short, and it was a big deal, right? That was, that, that was a big deal. You know, three teachers, you know, surrounded her <laughs> and, you know, like <laughs> telling her to change the, clo the socks to the, like, longer ones. And she refused it. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And you know that that conversation went for like fifteen minutes, and she ended up you know changing the socks for the moment, and you know that yeah. was solved. But you know it doesn't make sense yeah. at all. It's hot, you know, sometimes. Yeah. But you know yeah. they're not allowed to wear socks, you know, which are now covering their ankle bones. Then I don't know why <laughs> at all. Yeah. Well, you know, first you show your ankles, then you're walking around with some kind of stick. And that's just <laughs> how it goes. And then you have a mask and you're telling people to social distance. <laughs> and you have distance. a mask. <laughs> yeah, and you're beating up other girls that you find on the street. Yep. Yeah, the that's one thing I want to say it's weird about the hair dyeing thing to me, it's also every teacher I'm, I've talked with here has the same opinion. If they come as a student with dyed hair, it's a huge deal. However, after the like third year students graduate, about a week or two later, we have another assembly where it's kind of like farewell to whatever teachers are being transferred or retiring. And the... Mm -hmm recently graduated class is like invited to come and say their goodbyes too. And no exaggeration, like 40% of them dye their hair in those two weeks <laughs> and no one cares. It's like, yeah. Oh, you've graduated now have blonde hair. We don't care. Welcome back. Say goodbye. Totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. only two weeks passed. If they had done this two weeks earlier, you'd be screaming at them. But now no What's problem whatsoever. Yeah. Literally, the teachers walk yeah. up and like, oh, I like your hair. It looks so nice. It's like, uh -huh. but you would have screamed yeah. at them if this was three weeks earlier. This makes no sense. <laughs> That's right. So uh, as a teacher, I, I, I really want to say that those rules have like, have like no meaning. Like, you know, like it doesn't make sense at all. But, you know, like what's important for teachers is to keep the rules and whether roles have, you know, something for their, the kid's future or not, you know, like keeping roles is the most important thing. And the role itself doesn't have anything or any contents or like any meanings on themselves. But, you know, like just, you know, rules, rules, rules. It doesn't make sense at all because, you know, like um, keeping roles is the most important thing. And the contents of those roles, like... I can't even explain why their ankle bones have to be like, you know, covered <laughs> with socks or why those kids cannot dye their hair. 
if there's、yeah. a research that when kids dye their hair, then their like level of like smartness goes down or something, then I understand. <laughs>、right. But the problem is there's probably research that shows the exact opposite, and all the teachers just ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Then those、yeah. rules haven't been changed for like decades since in the、mm-hmm. World War Two or something. Yeah, so, those rules are really obsolete. But you know,、mm-hmm. Japan, you know, things don't change so often. Yep. So、uh, an- another one of these things that is prohibited nowadays, and actually, this is more of a modern thing that is associated with Furio. This this hairstyle, you don't really see it so much. I don't think you see it at all. Like even in the '90s, or, or of course the '80s or '70s, this is a more recent hairstyle. But it's called two block, right?、Hey. And、uh, it, that comes from the English two block, but that that's not a term that we use in English.、Um, Ryan, how would you describe? Can can you describe the two block? <laughs> it, it's, it's just a haircut that's parted. <laughs> oh, it's got the sides are shaved. Yeah, exactly. See, yeah, it's not it's、sense. not a big deal, right? Like they just shave the sides, right? And if he didn't guess- have like the top of his hair kind of bleached, I think students at my school could have that. Nobody would notice. <laughs> yeah, like this is fairly common these days. You still see it, but、um, again, just to be clear, like basically you just shave the sides, and then I guess you cut the the top kind of short, but it's still you know longer, obviously, than the. Sides which are completely shaved, so you have kind of this strip of hair running, I guess, at the top. It's it's a very wide strip because it's like the complete top, but yeah, no no hair in the sides. Is that is that an okay description, right? It's not no、shape? hair. It's like because you can still see <laughs> where、bit. it would be very 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 thin、yeah. hair on the sides.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the point is, yeah,、uh, when you have two block hair, you know, like. You have that both sides shaved.、Uh, that's what it is, I think. And that kind right, of hairstyle、yeah. has been really like popular、mm-hmm. for the past ten years or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see it like like、uh, in Exile, right? Which is this popular、um, kind of music group, male music group. They're kind of hip hop ish and kind of you know. Inspired by that sort of aesthetic, and so you see some guys from there, so some entertainers. But this hairstyle has become associated with modern day what people call furio nowadays.、Um, so they look different from back in the eighties, but now this is a new hairstyle that is associated with them. And a lot of schools prohibit the two block, right? Right, Shu. Completely, yeah. Yeah. This makes even get, less get- sense because I have students whose heads are completely shaven, which is just a more extreme version, and that's a okay. That is right because you know when you have the、uh, completely shaved hair, like especially when you are a part of baseball team, you have to shave yeah, all yeah. the hair in, in some schools.、Yeah. So that's、mm-hmm. fine. But when some parts, only some parts, are shaved, and that's that's no good. And once again, you know, I'm talking about like my school. And the、yeah. other day, one student came in with you know the two block hair. Then. Yeah. Again, he was locked in a very small room, being yelled at. You know, like all the teachers, and you know, there's、yeah. nothing that he can do. <laughs> like he can、yeah, grow he the grow hair、back. in a short, like I mean, faster than usual. Everybody knows that you can grow back eyebrows, but you can't grow back the hair、yeah. on the side of your. What、head? if someone、right. shaves Maybe, their like, whole hair for their baseball club, but just the top of it happens to grow faster than the sides? Um, that's <laughs> they'll tell us. Shave like, the rest. Technically, that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's okay then. <laughs> as long as we see it incrementally grow out into the two block day by day, it's okay. <laughs> that's right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, natural two block. That that that's fine. But you know,、yeah. then again, like I don't know why. Like if a student asks me why they cannot have you know the two block style hair, like I cannot explain. Or I I personally think it's totally fine. What's wrong、yeah. with that kind of hairstyle? This this looks like a normal haircut to me. <laughs> yeah,、mm-hmm. like. I can argue that the reason to the pompadour is unsafe, right? Like you might get it caught in a door or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> you might block the view of a student who sits behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, I don't know, hit some hit some student in the eye with your hair or something, right? Yeah, that's、like, scary. Yeah, there, there's there's justifications that you can come up with, but or maybe that's broken, the intention of that hairstyle, you know, to attack people <laughs> <laughs> or to keep social distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there's reasons that you can come up with, but with the two block, I, I again, I, just like you, Shu, I don't understand why. 
this is a big deal. Like it's it's a perfectly normal. I, I mean, it doesn't look all that strange or anything. It's it just seems fine. Like it's not unsafe. Okay, you know what's real what's story. Like when you said we had another haircut to look at, I was scrolling up and down looking for another like gaudy extreme haircut and just went right by this one because it doesn't look anything like that. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you didn't even. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even it, register it, like, this as being weird. a rebellious hairstyle when I was looking for a rebellious hairstyle because it looks gotcha. just like yeah, a normal exactly. haircut. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, well, the point is, you know, like they're not saying that to block is a free hairstyle. The thing is, in Japan, in schools, students cannot be different from each other. They cannot be unique. Right, they right. have to be all the same. And yeah. you know they have to be. And average, when you're not the same, no more, no less, then they you call know. you a furio, right? That's right. Yeah. So yeah. now the definition of furio, like nowadays in schools, is I think that um, they when you're different, you're furio, you are furio. Like you when mm. you have the like two block uh-huh, hairstyle uh-huh. because you know like not everybody has that two block hairstyle. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. when when not every when not every everyone can have it then it's not allowed you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like it, it doesn't yeah. make real sense at all these kids but, need to yeah. organize better because imagine if they like had everyone except like three students come in the zoo block then do the t- teachers <laughs> punish the three students who don't have the zoo block <laughs> well that that's exactly my point you know the thing is rule is really important so like if like the teacher tells everyone to have two block hair, then the the student who doesn't have the two block hair is punished. So yeah. like the rule can be whatever. The point is, you know, like what's important is to ru- to follow the rule. Whatever the rule is, you know, what we're teaching is to follow the rules. Mm. So the rules can mm. be anything. Like have two block hair. If that's the rule, mm. and if you don't have the two block hair, then you are to be punished. So, right. like, they are a little, you know, like, unfair or r- any rules that doesn't make sense at all. But the thing is, you know, mm-hmm. we are, we're just educating kids to be able to follow the rules. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so, really... I, so, there was a famous story, like, three or four years ago that in the UK, uh, boys that had a school uniform were complaining it was too hot. So, they all, like, coordinated together to show up wearing the girls' skirt uniform. Right, to like yeah. protest that because it was still one of the uniforms so it was like an allowed thing but they all did it as a group i'm really curious mm-hmm. if some school in japan like all the students came together and literally like 90 percent of them all got like the pompadour or the two block and came the same day with it what would the teachers do i don't know yes. but i would love to see that then you know yeah because if their reasoning how, is like know... you can't stand out like well you're not standing out everyone's doing it yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's how revolution happens, right? But in Japan, yeah. you know, like that that's why revolutions like don't happen because you know, we <laughs> yeah. are strictly educated not to you know, yeah. be different or you know, we are always told to follow the rules, whatever the rules are, you know, like if it's mm-hmm. if it makes sense or not, it doesn't matter. When there are rules, we have to follow it, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um one one last little thing that I want to mention is that, of course, we, we talked a lot about, you know, 80s and 70s, kind of this idea of Furio and the pompadours and all that kind of stuff. But um, once you get into the 90s, it seems like this idea of a Furio becomes more vague and general. You know, you start to get, you know, people that dress in kind of like hip hop fashion, they get called Furio. People that, um, like, for example, later in the 90s and, and 2000s, you get like the Gyaru, they might have been called uh, Furio, you know, kind of because c- they dye their hair b- blonde. Mm. In the 2000s and 2010s, you get like kind of the gyaru right? Which are the guy, like the male versions of the Gyaru, which again, they, they kind of dye their hair blonde, maybe they get tans. Um, then in like the 2010s, you get like the Paripi, which are these like people that go out clubbing and you know they dress a certain way kind of like you know club style fashion so basically 
it's kind of like what you've been talking about, Shu, that in like anybody that doesn't conform to what is supposed to be like the mainstream, you know, ends up being called Furio. And yes, some of these people, maybe they get into fights and they do bad things. But some of these people just like to wear, you know, kind of creative fashion and dye their hair, but they're not necessarily bad people. But some people still call them all like Furio. Honestly, it's more simple that than that. Totally it's just whatever true, the yeah. older generation doesn't like is Furio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or like all the people don't understand that, you know, like things are changing, you know, like when they were in like elementary school, you know, there was no Wi-Fi or there was no cell phone either. But now mm-hmm. like every kid has a smartphone and, you know, mm-hmm. if they carry one to school, you know, again, you know, those kids will be locked in a very small room being yelled at at all the <laughs> yeah. teachers, you know, like things Next change. to the guy with no eyebrows. <laughs> you just can't bring them to right, school. Yeah. <laughs> but now, you know, you know, now, yeah, like, how creative you are is, you know, like, the most important thing. But in, in Japanese education, you know, what we can teach them is, you know, not to be different. Just follow all, follow all the rules and, you know, follow the mainstream. And that's what we're doing. But, you know, look at, in like, Bill Gates or, like, Steve Jobs, you know, like Steve mm-hmm. Jobs who didn't go to university or, or maybe he... He, he did, but he quit in the mm-hmm. first year or second year. But anyway, creativeness yeah. is the most important thing to survive this mm-hmm. uh, century, I guess. And yeah. that's how Japan is really behind. Yeah. Um, once Japan was really, you know, like uh, developed after World War mm-hmm. II, you know, when our like ancestors, not, not ancestors, our like grandfathers, mothers, you know, worked mm-hmm. really hard to build this country, which is right, great, right. but we still try to keep the same way when there is Wi-Fi, you know, we still send <laughs> fax. Do you even know what <laughs> fax is? F-A-X, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, we still use emails for, you know, very important business. You know, we mm-hmm. are supposed to use, you know, those, you know, old things and we're not right, adopting right. any of you know very you know new great stuff and mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. educating our kids the same way so yeah. i i don't i i can't really think this country has a great future you know following mm-hmm. all the you know old ways and well you know the same thing but anyway, yeah, you know it, like i mean what we we've talked about it on, on the show before but you know one of the wonderful things about Japan is that, you know, people do follow the rules and it's a very safe place and people are very great, polite yeah. and that's wonderful. But you do need creativity. You do need innovation. You do need new ideas. You do need people that can feel comfortable kind of breaking the mold and trying new things. Otherwise, like you're saying, you know, there's other countries that are going to do that. And then what happens to Japan, right? They're just forgotten. Yeah, so. that's right. But anyway, yeah. what I want to say is that in schools or like in the society, if you dye your hair, which can also mean that you're creative, you're trying to be different from others. But, you know, like mm-hmm. then in Japan, if you did it, you will be called mm-hmm. Furio. You know, you will yeah. be, you know, like assumed as Furio, even like mm-hmm. regardless of your personality. If <laughs> if you ever dyed your hair in school and you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're a bad person, yeah. So that that's I think that's a definition of Furio nowadays, you know, being different. Nowadays, yeah, being, it's really an appearance kind of thing. I would right? call those kids like creative kids. Yeah. But in Japan they are just like Furio kids, which is yeah. very sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So um of course there is I, I will include various links and videos and stuff for people that wanna see more about this. Um I, I'll include a link to that that Rizento YouTuber, that, that guy was really interesting. Um, there is much more that we could talk about, but I think uh, we can uh, stop it here. Unless, Ryan, is there anything else you want to mention? Nah, I'm good. All right. And any last words, Shu? Um, not really. Yeah, I okay. would love to do it again if you ever <laughs> called me again. Of course, no, yeah. we love having you. And and we love hearing uh, your perspectives on things. And also, like, you're, you're in a very unique situation where, you know, you... Again, people should listen to Japan Station episode 45 to to learn more about your backstory. But, you know, you very much went against the kind of mainstream Japanese way of doing things. And uh, 
now you are in Japan too, and you, you have experience as a teacher in Japan. So you have this very interesting perspective, kind of like both sides, you know, the kind of like you see the mainstream side, but you also、um, have. Have that kind of,、uh, you were brave enough to try something totally different. So, yeah, that's yeah, right. I, I think it's a,、mm-hmm. oh, in that case, I do have、Then、a question. You know, How big was your d i z e n d o My reason,、uh, I never had the hairstyle, but I always、uh, dyed my hair, bleached my hair. And、uh, I was never、late. a bad person, actually. <laughs> okay, as a teacher, well, I don't know, but. <laughs> Well, the thing is. I feel is, like that know, actually could happen. You could have a teacher wearing Fudio clothes, disciplining a student for wearing it, and like the student's just not allowed to ask why. <laughs> and I would say, because I went to university, you know, I followed all the rules until now, so I can do whatever I want. So, like. <laughs> you can have the so, answer. Which、ready. doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, well. Anyway, so like I'm hiding that I was a comedian once, or I'm still doing it, but you know, my、mm-hmm. students don't know that I'm a, like a, a comedian because what、mm-hmm. I have to teach them is to be normal. Like, yeah, yeah. I always have to teach them to be like not to be different. But、yeah. a Japanese stand up comedian, I'm different from like anybody else in Japan. So、right. that's my conflict. You know, I want them to be creative because I know there will be ways for those kids if they cannot、mm-hmm. be a salary man. But, you know, there are a lot of different ways to make more people,、uh, more, more money than other、mm-hmm. like salary men or, you know, like normal people right, like right, do. Right. But、yeah. I cannot do it. I cannot, you know, Tell them that they can be a comedian in the future. <laughs> you don't have to follow yeah, the mainstream. You know,、tough. you can be creative、yeah. and there will be some creative ways for your future. But now I cannot do that. You know, so that's why I'm really comfortable, you know, talking about it here because I cannot talk about、mm-hmm. it in Japanese and other students or, you know, other teachers hear it, listen to it,、mm-hmm. and, you know, I will be fired. But, you know, the thing right, is. Right. After following all of those crazy rules and stuff, nobody is able to speak English in Japan. So that, you know, like nobody can understand what I'm saying right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So,、uh, well, yeah. I can speak whatever about, you know, problems of schools or anything in、mm-hmm. English, which, which makes me really comfortable talking on this show. But、oh, in、okay. the real life, I have to act、mm-hmm. to be a、uh, Yeah, you really... have to follow the rules and you have to do what they tell you. And, you know, That's、yeah. right. So,、uh, it's been a pleasure being on your show.、Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please have me. And、again. of course, yeah, we'd, we'd be happy yeah, to have you、do. back on again. But、um, we'll close it out here. So, again, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you, everyone. See ya. See ya.